change can always be big and scary and can be a challenge for some people. Oh, I get that completely, 100%. Especially when you've been successful. Big, scary changes are big and scary, naturally. But sometimes being adaptable and being unafraid of change is the biggest driver to success. There's this famous story that Blockbuster Video had the opportunity to buy Netflix when Netflix was this fledgling, struggling company. And all they would have had to do was pony up a little bit of money and they would have purchased Netflix, which is now a multi-billion dollar company and absolutely dominates the media landscape and owns, for the most part, the, the streaming stratosphere. Like it's dead. They, they have it. It is theirs for the taking forever and ever. And Blockbuster could have had it, but they were fearful of streaming. They were fearful of their brick and mortar stores going away. They were fearful of all sorts of things. They, they shouldn't have been. Had they just simply embraced them, they would be a billion-dollar company that would have the envy of damn near every media company in the world. But they don't because they were afraid of change. They were afraid to adapt. And now I think there's one Blockbuster store left, and it's in some BFE town in, like, Alaska. They didn't adapt. They died. They had no interest in being adaptable, had no interest of not being afraid of change. And what ended up happening to them was they died. I think Dabo Sweeney is the blockbuster of college football. He's been so deathly afraid to change and adapt the way Clemson operates in recruiting and not just in recruiting, but in the transfer portal. And I get it a hundred percent. I really honestly, truly do. I understand why he feels the way he does because you've been insanely successful on top outside of Alabama. Nobody in the last 15 years has been as successful in the sport as Clemson. So his thought process, his philosophies, whatever the case may be, they've worked. It has been an important one for th their, their recruiting strategy has worked. It's been <laughs> undeniably good, but the game has changed around them and Clemson has been afraid to adapt and afraid of change. And they've kind of been left behind. You've seen other programs rise to the occasion, become successful. And there's really just not a whole lot that, that Clemson can change now outside of its recruiting strategy. And it certainly appears as if Dabo Sweeney has no interest in adapting to that. They've worked under the guise of kind of this idea in Dabo's mind of we want our offers to college recruits to mean something. We don't just want to offer the first piece of tail that comes along and hope that we can get them on campus, whatever. They want to go from we want to see you in, in camp as a sophomore, see you in camp as a junior, before your senior year, see you in camp, evaluate whether or not you could really honestly, truly be a member of our football program. And then if we think that, there is a spot for you here. We'll offer you a spot, which is probably the way it should be done. Like that's, that's a real true, honest way to operate instead of just flood recruits with offers and hope you can get in the door to start recruiting them. They want to develop relationships, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. College football recruiting has now become a sp be dating world where when somebody enters the transfer portal, you got about 15 minutes to get your pitch in and figure it out. And a lot of dudes will commit to places sight unseen from both sides. We'll commit to, Hey, I'm going to go to this school because that's going to provide me the best opportunity. The coaches haven't looked at them. The 
players haven't looked at the schools, whatever the case may be. And I understand why Clemson would be 100% apprehensive to participate in a system like that when it's so, so anti the system that you want to operate in. I get it 100%. To a T, I understand why it would be an issue for Clemson to operate that way. And yet, your your hand is kind of forced because if you don't change, if you don't adapt, you, you're, you're going to die, metaphorically. You can say a lot about Nick Saban. Two of his best qualities are he was not afraid to adapt. They went from a flat out like ground and pound eye formation ball control offense. We're going to get the biggest, fattest, meanest offensive line that we can find to shove you around. And we're going to rely on our running backs and offensive lines and defensive lines to win national championships. And then he saw that the game was changing and that he couldn't just simply say, damn it, this is the way I want to play football, so that's the way we're going to play football. And he changed, brings in Lane Kiffin. They start chucking the ball all over the field, become a prolific offense to couple with a fantastic defense, and they remain at the top of the college football mountaintop. Say what you will about Nick Saban. If you have things you'd like to tear him down for, that's fine. But it is undeniable that he was unafraid to adapt and he was unafraid to step outside of his comfort zone and say, while I don't want necessarily to operate this way, I have to operate this way. I'm forced to operate this way. And that leads me to changing the way I want to run this program. And Dabo Sweeney hasn't done that. Dabo Sweeney, they tried to dabble in the portal a little bit during the end of the bowl season and the start of spring practice where they offered, I think, like five offensive linemen, which... Offering five offensive linemen for Clemson is like offering 50 offensive linemen for pretty much everybody else. It's a basically out of this world change for Clemson. And I don't think any of those five offensive linemen, by the way, ended up going to Clemson. But it's just, it's a flat out fear for Dabo Sweeney to adapt and change. And again, you've been really good. I completely understand why. At the base level, you're like, I don't want to operate differently. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes you end up looking around going, well, how in the hell did we get to eight and five every year and Florida State, who has completely embraced a transfer portal, or Ole Miss, or insert damn near any other school here, how did they pass Clemson by? And I've talked about it a few weeks ago where – the facilities era of college football is over. Having the best facilities is not necessarily at the top of the mind of every college football recruit. They want to know NIL money. They want to know how you're going to get me to the NFL. That's whether that's should be their top priorities or not is indifferent in this conversation. That's what they prioritize. And Dabo Sweeney is not necessarily the world's biggest proponent of NIL. Um, there was, you know, his famous, when they start paying these guys, I'm going I'm going to go do something else because, God forbid, I didn't get no money when I was a college football player. So 35 years later, these damn kids better not get none either. It's ridiculous, but that was his thought process, and he espoused that until it happened, and then that he didn't care. But he's kind of averse to NIL money doesn't really have an interest in participating in the transfer portal. And when those are the ways you kind of got to operate in 2024, it's not really out of the realm of possibility to see how the rest of the sport has passed you by. It's not really all that difficult to say, well, how did they go from 14 and 0 and 15 and 0 and 14 and 1, 13, 2 to eight and five, nine and four and going from being ranked number one, through number four every year in the preseason poll to being ranked number 12 to number 20. You're not playing the same way everybody else is. And everybody else has figured out a way to get an upper hand on you. 
The game has changed. It's adapted. The way to construct a roster has changed and adapted. And when you're hesitant to embrace those adaptations, you, you get left behind. And eventually you go on a business. Dabo Sweeney's the blockbuster of college football. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you're listening on a podcast feed, drop a five-star review. goes a long way in helping out the channel. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content that we are pumping out here on Saturday Glory. And I'll catch you tomorrow for another episode of the Daily Huddle.